Uh, Herbert, bring me the phone. Thank you. Amen. All right. If you're at home, grab yourself a Bible. If you are at home, grab yourself a Bible. Amen. Amen. If you're at home, grab yourself a Bible. Thank you, God. If you're home. All right. Turn me to the book of Matthew. Matthew 21. Matthew 21. Verse 21. Go to Matthew 21, verse 21. If you got it, say amen. Matthew 21, verse 21. All right, we got one amen. All right, Matthew 21, verse 21. All right, uh, sorry about the delay, but the, the bishop ain't here, so uh, I'm still doing two jobs. Do me a favor, Herbert, do me a favor, go turn this mic down a little bit. Matthew 21, verse 21. All right, it said, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto the mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not. The biggest problem with a whole lot of us is this. Most of us don't have faith. Most of us don't have faith. You trust money. You trust your job. You trust your car. You, you trust your man, your woman. You trust things you can see. And because you put your trust in things, whatever you're asking God for, you'll never get. Because you keep putting your trust in things. See, God is the God of us. He's not the God of things. Satan is the God of this world. That's why a whole lot of people go to Hollywood and they sell their souls to the devil because they want things. And then Satan opened it up and he gives them all the things that they want, but he steals their soul. And he takes their life. But if you want an abundant life, you have to give yourself to God. And you have to trust in a God that you can't see. See, it's foolish. Some of my friends say, you stupid. You go to that church and, and you pray to this magic man. And, and you read this book full of flaws. And they say, you foolish. And I look at them. I say, no, you the fool. Because one day you're going to die. And when you die, you're going to have to meet God. You have to meet God for yourself. And you can't say, oh, great universe. Oh, great creator. Because if you say that to him, he's going to say, depart from me. I know you not. You have to sell yourself to God. You have to be with God. You have to be able to trust in a God that you've never seen. That's called faith. And we don't have great faith. When COVID came around, everybody was scared of something they never even heard of before. You, COVID, well, I ain't know what COVID, COVID, yeah, and you're running. I saw murderers walking around with masks from head to toe because they were scared of something that the devil said would kill them. You have to learn how to have faith. Because God says here, Matthew 21, 21, it says, If you have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which was done to the fig tree, but ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and it be cast into the sea, and it shall be done. And then it says, verse 22, In all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. God says, if you have faith, Everything that you ask him for in prayer, ye shall receive. Uh, how do I know this? Uh, I used to be homeless. I used to be carless. I, 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 I got kicked out of college. My life was a total failure. But I learned the value of prayer. So when I was sleeping underneath that tree, I said, God, can you please send me a car? God, can you please get me back in school? You got to learn how to pray. And if you pray with sincerity and pray with faith, God will open the windows of heaven and he will give you everything that you ask for. The problem with us is we think that's foolishness. Give me a job. I don't need a God. Give me money. I don't need a God. Give me, give me what I need. Give me what I'm asking for. And God says only if you had enough faith. 
you would have everything that you asked for. Learn how to trust in God and not trust in man. Next, turn me to 1 John 4. 1 John 4. 1 John 4. I'm going to read verses 1, 2, and 3. Thank you, Jesus. 1 John 4. I'm going to read verses 1, 2, and 3. 1 John 4. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. What does that mean for you and I? God says, don't believe everything you hear. Don't believe everything you hear. Don't believe everything you hear. Uh, I have some friends, and when I was growing up, I have all kinds of friends. I got friends who are millionaires. I got friends who are murderers. I got all kinds of friends. And what's interesting is I got some friends who were pimps, P-I-M-P, cold brothers. And one of the things they used to do, they used to talk to the ladies, and they would lie to the ladies. They would tell them all kinds of wonderful things that were falsehoods. And the girls would believe them and, and give their best thing. The best thing that God gave them would give it away and give the money to this man. Because they followed a false God. They followed a false spirit. Uh, we turn on every day. You have this thing. And we're, some of you are watching it. That you have social media. And you have TV. And you have movies. And you have Netflix. These are all idol gods. The problem with those things, if you start to believe in them, they're going to start to tell you that you're not worth that you have no worth, that you have no value, that you have low self-image, that, you, that you're nothing, that you're nobody. And so many of us, we believe Instagram. Instagram is one of the worst things for self-esteem because you look at somebody and they don't look like you. And you look at this person, they got more money than you. And you look at this person, they got more followers than you. Then you start to judge your life. Then you start to judge your self-worth. And you stop believing in the God that told you you are great. You are amazing. Because you look at the thing and you say, well, if I don't have what they have, then I'm not worth it. I don't have any value. And the devil is a lie. Because God says you are wonderful. You are special. You are mighty. He called you great and amazing things that we're going to read about later. So you got to stop looking for Satan to give you your self-esteem. Let me say it again. Stop looking to the world to give you your self-value. Stop looking to the world to tell you who you are. In fact, the only thing that Satan will give you is fear. Satan will give you a spirit of fear. Some of you are afraid to apply for a job that you think you're not qualified for. Let me tell you a secret. When you go for a job, even if you ain't qualified, if you act qualified, you might get the job. Because the whole job interview is based on who are you? Do you believe in the lie that you're selling? See, when you go to a job interview, you got a whole resume. Most of it's full of lies. And you got to get up there and you got to pretend to be the person that you put on paper. The thing is, if you have self-worth and you have self-image, you can sell yourself to the person. When I first got hired for teaching, I was unqualified by show, for show. When I first became an accountant, I ain't never counted nobody's money. But I sure did get them jobs because I got in that job interview and I said, yes, I did do this. And, oh, yes, I did. And they were like, I know you lying, but it sounds good. Come on over here. You got to learn how to have value in yourself. You got to learn how to believe in yourself. Stop looking to the world to validate who you are. And look to God because he's the one that made you. He gave you your self-worth. He tells you who you are. Next, turn with me. Turn with me. Turn with me. Turn me to John 15 and 19. John 15 and 19. John 15 and 19. Thank you, Jesus. John 15 and 19. John 15 and 19. John 15 and 19 says this. If we were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hated you. Let me say this again. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. This is going to get deep in a second. But because ye are not of the world, 
I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Today, I was on social media and I had to talk to this young person. And uh, they asked a question. They said, do you know that they created the KKK? I said, yes. And then the young man said, well, do you know why they created the KKK? Does anybody know why the KKK was created? It's very interesting. It's very interesting. Well, the KKK was created in 1915. They were created because when blacks became free after slavery was over, they, their eyes were open and blacks could now go get jobs, etc. But what had happened was there were white people who were also free next to the blacks. And they were living side by side. So guess what the black and white people started to do? Become friends. They started to become friends with one another. They started they start to spend time with one another. They started to go to church with one another. Their, their children were in interracial marriages. And all these things started out. This was back in the eight, late 1800s up until the early 1920s. When the system saw this, they said, hey, man, we got to stop this. We can't have these two people together because they're going to figure out it ain't a black and white thing. It's a money thing. So they created this organization called the KKK. It was created by the governor. It was Democrats back in the day. Interesting enough, it was the Democrats that created this organization called the KKK. So y'all don't know no history. You better learn how to read. And when they created it, they, they said, go out and terrorize blacks. So they said, and then they went to the white people and said, uh, that black man wants to rape your daughter. And see, the interesting thing about that, they sold the spirit of hate. And they lied on black men. So fast forward 2022. The black man is the most feared man on the planet. Every race hates you. But loves you at the same time. They hate your image. But love your image at the same time. You are the most feared and dynamic entity on the little planet called Earth. Even the Africans fear and hate you at the same time. But the thing is, the Bible says... Let's read it right here again, John 15, 19. It says, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. But then it says, but because you are not of this world, I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. See, the thing is, there's something different about you. Your swagger is a little different. The reason why you can pick up a mic and go a hip, hop, a hip, hip and then make a billion dollars because God put something special in you that nobody else in the planet has. When you go on the stage and you do a, a Michael Jackson moonwalk on the stage and he float across the stage, he do something special. When Beyonce get up there in six inch stilettos and she walk like no other woman can walk in the world, there's something special about you. Because God said you were made in his image. And because you're made in his image, you have a swag that nobody else has. And because you have that swag, the devil hates you. See, it's not the white man that hates you. Satan hates you. Because in the book of Genesis, it said that God made you in his image. So every time you get in the mirror, you look in that image. You're looking at what God looks like. So when you walk down the street, you walk like how God will walk. When you speak... You speak of how God would speak. And the enemy hates that. So what does he do? He sends messages. He sends subliminal messages. So that you will start to hate yourself. So last week in Chicago, black folks murdering other black folks. Last week in South Central, rolling 60s murdering Hoover. Last week in Rialto, you got all this gang banging. All these people, these many gods walking around destroying each other. Because the devil has sown self-hate. But God is saying to you, I chose you before the beginning began to begin. You're more special than you'll ever know. God says you're special. He says you're a royal priesthood. Matter of fact, turn to 1 Peter. 1 Peter 2 and 9. 1 Peter, way in the back. 1 Peter 2 and 9. This is what God say about you. God says, but you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. God says you are a chosen generation. He called you royalty. He says you are a holy generation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth his praises of him who have called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. This is what God says about you.
He says you were chosen. He says you're special. You're more different than everybody else. He says you're peculiar unto me. He says, and because of that, the world hates you. So the first thing you have to do, come out of darkness, come into the light. We're called the church of light just for this very reason. Because God called me out of the darkness. I hated myself when I went to college. I didn't want to be black. When I was in high school, I listened to white music because I wanted to be different than everybody else in my neighborhood. I didn't like myself because everything I saw about me was negative. Even black was negative to color. Uh, if you evil, you always see black. So even the very color itself was, was negative. But when I got to college, I met a man and he said, open this book. He told me to read the autobiography of Malcolm X. That was the first introduction. And then another man I met, he gave me a Bible. And I said, well, how can I read that? That's what they used to enslave us. He said, no, brother, you need to read it. And once I read it, I opened it up and I found out that the whole Bible was about you. It's about your relationship with God. The trials and tribulations. How hard-headed you is. Ain't nobody more hard-headed than black folk. And you got to admit that. You know we the most ignorant thing. When we want to get ignorant, we ignorant. Ain't nobody get ignorant like we. We the only people that go to work and tell the boss what we ain't going to do. You go to work and be like, I ain't going to do this. I'm not sweeping that car. And they be like, what? I'm your boss. He's like, I don't care. I get a new job. And we the only folks that do that. Because God put something special in you. God says you are peculiar people. He says you're special. You're a royal priesthood. Next, turn with me to 1 John 4. 1 John 4, 4 through 6. Turn back to 1 John 4, 4 through 6. We're almost done. 1 John 4, verses 4 through 6. We got Bibles in the back if you need it. It says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in thee than he that is in the world. Verse 5, it says, they are the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. Verse 6 says, we are of God, and he that, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God cannot hear us. Hereby know that we are the spirit of truth and, the, and not the spirit of error. The Bible says, ye are of God. And it says this, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God says, if you turn to him, now all of a sudden you become great. There's greatness in you. The problem is you don't use it. The problem is you follow your friends. The problem is you listen to uh, uh, NBA Young Boy. You, you listen to Kodak Black and you, you follow all these people. And their only job is to deceive you. It's interesting. I have a student. He, his name is The Game. And he, he became a rapper and a rap superstar. Long story short, he went to Compton High School. Right over here. Right over here. Right over here. So what was interesting was that The, the, the Game, when, when he got grown, I found out he, he was affiliated with the organization to wear red. And I had to scratch my head. I said, what, when did this happen? I said, I don't know. But I said, he, he went over to school to here. See, back in that day, Compton was blue pride, blue everything. All the Crips in the city went to Compton High School. So I said, when did this happen? I had to scratch my head, just like a little monkey. I scratched my head. When did this happen? But what a friend told me this. Hip-hop is entertainment. Hip-hop is entertainment. Snoop Dogg, when he went to Poly High School, had a 3.5 GPA. He's 6'5", he was a star basketball player. Ice Cube never lived in Compton. In fact, he lived in Inglewood, right around the corner from where our old church was. The problem is, y'all believe in all this stuff. Easy E never gangbanged. His brother is from Kelly Park. Easy E ain't never cripped a day in his life. Y'all following foolishness and listen to people that are lying to you and you doing this stuff for real. I'm really gonna do a drive-by. Fool, if you do a drive-by, you gonna kill somebody, you going to prison, and you going to jail, or they gonna kill you. You taking things that are fake and trying to make them real and doing what the devil's instructing you to do and you're following the path that leads to hell. Because Satan runs entertainment. Satan is the king of television. 
Satan is the king of media. Satan is the king of Wi-Fi. Satan runs the movie industry. That's why they try to feed these subliminal messages and teach you that you have low image, teach you that you're nothing, and they're all lies. Because the truth is in this Bible. God says who you was from the beginning, began to begin. Matter of fact, turn to the book of Revelations. Book of Revelations. Go to Revelations 2 and 9. Thank you, Jesus. Revelations 2 and 9. Revelations 2 and 9. I love this Bible. God says this, Revelations 2 and 9. He says, I know thy works and thy tribulations and thy poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy which say that they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. God says, I know your works. I know that you're struggling. I know you watched your mama become a crackhead and that you didn't have a family. I know that you was molested when you was four or five years old. I know that you went to the foster system. I know that you didn't have nobody. I know that you was homeless. I know that you failed all your classes in school and you never thought you could do anything. But God says, I know your tribulation. But look what he says. He says, you're rich. Is God lying? No, he's not. Because the truth is, you are rich. You just don't know it. You're the only people. I remember this is 1984. This happened. That's one good thing about being old. You know old history. In 1984, the Japanese prime minister was speaking. And they asked him about black Americans. And he, see, back in the day, you didn't have a social media. So people was very honest. And he said, he said this. He says, black American, most stupid person on planet. And they were like, oh my God, oh, he's racist. Oh, oh, and, and, the, and they, just, they, they went crazy with it. But that was the first part of the statement. The second part of the statement was this. He said, because you're smarter, faster, stronger, more intelligent, more beautiful, more graceful than everybody else on the planet. Why are you not achieving? That was the second part of the statement. They only played the first part. They didn't play the second part. Because they realize when they see you. I watched Shaquille O'Neal stand 7-2, dunk a ball, and bring down the whole court. You know how much power that commands? How can this man, this 7-2, get up, dunk a ball, and the whole thing comes down? Because there's power in him. Dr. Charles Drew performed surgery on the street corner and saved somebody's life with a knife. How do you perform open heart surgery on the street corner if you don't have genius inside of you? The very cell phone that you have right here was created in 1971 by a man who looked just like you. And the sad part, you don't even know it. Air conditioner was created by somebody that looked like you. My son right here does air conditioning. A black man created that. He found the chemicals and figured out if you move them fast enough, they'll bump into each other and it become cold. All you got to do is put a fan behind it. Somebody that looks like you. Uh, I love cars. The automotive engine was created by a black man. The oil in the engine was created by a black man. The transmission for the car was created by a black man. The train system was created by a black man. The elevators were created by a black man. The light bulb filament was created by a black man. And Thomas Edison stole it from him and put a piece of glass on top of it and said, it's mine. The very telephone that you use I'm not even talking about the cell phone, the one in the house phone was created by a black man who learned how to do the tap, 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 tap. He did the first system. You don't know that greatness actually came from you. That's why God says you're rich, although you think you're poor. A very wise woman once told me this. She said, Mike, she says, you're as rich as you think you are. I said, what? I was, I was a college kid, I was real poor, I was broke. And she said, Mike, you're rich. I said, well, it ain't in my bank, you know, I was being stupid, I, I don't see it. My bank account negative. She said, no, she says, you'll get it later on. Uh, there's a guy named Elon Musk. Elon Musk created what you know as Tesla. Guess what? Tesla came from his thoughts. This cell phone came from a thought. You're as rich as your thoughts. The problem with you is, what are you thinking about? Foolishness, Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, 
Paramount Plus. You spend too much time doing nothing. You spend video games all day. You smoking weed all day. You getting faded all day. You getting a little sex all day. And you ain't using your brain for nothing. God says you're rich. Start applying yourself. Don't be, and don't be too proud to beg. Well, what you mean about that? I need to be homeless? No. If you got to start off cleaning the parking lot at a McDonald's, clean the parking lot at a McDonald's. My first job was at Burger King on King and Western. I worked right there when I was 14, 15 years old. I had to sweep the parking lot. I had to go in the bathroom with a toothbrush and then scrub the counters. You got to learn how to start from the bottom if you want to get to the top. Don't be too proud. I can't do fast food. That's a lie out of the pit of hell. Most millionaires were fast food workers. You're not too proud. Don't put that pride aside because the Bible said pride always comes before the fall. And the very last thing, and the very last thing, and the very last thing. Turn to Acts 3 and 19, and we're done. Acts 3 and 19, thank you, Jesus. Acts 3 and 19. Acts 3 and 19. Acts 3 and 19. I need to turn to it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It's a powerful word. First, if you know some young people, let them hear this. Acts 3 and 19. Acts 3 and 19 says this. Repent. That means turn around. Ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. I'm going to translate this. Verse 20, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. I'm going to translate it. Verse 21, whom heaven must receive unto the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. God sent a man named Jesus. God's purpose in sending Jesus was to save his people. If you read the book of Matthew, they talked about it. Jesus said, I was sent to my people first. This is in the Bible. He said, I was sent to my people first. It's in your Bible. And he came to restore. So the problem with a lot of you is, crack did a job on us in the 80s and 90s. Gang banging did a job on us in the 80s and 90s. And the greatness that once existed in your family, you can't even see it anymore. Grandpa been dead 40 years ago. Grandmama just died 10, 12 years ago. So you don't understand who you are. You're lost. You don't know about your legacy because it was cut off. See, that's what the devil wanted to do. He wanted to cut you off from daddy. He wanted you to cut you off from daddy. He wanted to cut you off from mama. He wanted you to cut you off from grandpa so you couldn't see who you used to be. The truth is, the greatness that's in you is already in your family. Uh, Michael Jackson can sing so good because his mother and father were singers. See, his, his father was always playing to me. His father had a band, his, his mama used to sing. That gift didn't come from nowhere. Uh, Elon Musk, I read about him today. His father's an engineer. These gifts don't come out the sky. Bill Gates. Both of his parents are educated. In fact, his father is a lawyer. His mom is a school teacher. Their favorite subject is math, hence computers. The very gifts, you already have them in your DNA. So here's what you got to do. You said, God, I don't know what I'm going to do in my life. Uh, I looked up to my family and there's nobody, there's nothing to grab onto. See, a mother and a father is like a branch on a tree. You're supposed to be able to grab onto them and swing. You're supposed to be able to grab on, but you look up, there's nothing to grab. There's nobody there. So here's what you got to tell God. God, I want to change my life, but I don't know how. Because I look around and there's nobody there. And the people I see there hate their life and they've given up. So God, can you restore me? And here's what Jesus will do. He will come into your heart. I promise you that I, God, I drop dead right here on this spot. He will come into your life. That spirit will fill you up. And the original purpose that you have, he will restore to you. You will find out that that's how I learned how to work on cars. I, I ain't never been to school to work on cars. 
I didn't realize that my grandfather had the gift of mechanics, that my uncles knew how, my grandfather built his own house from the ground up without ever going to school because it was against the law for black people to go to school in the early 1900s. That gift was already in me. I ride a bicycle every day and I talked to my big mama and I found out my grandpa rode a bicycle every day. The gifts that you have, they're already there. You just need God to tap you upside the head. You just need God to get you some encouragement. You just need God to turn you around so you can get back on track. I rebuke the devil. I rebuke the lies. Black men, you're beautiful. You're wonderful. You're strong. You're amazing. And we need you to lead our women out of this mess. Because the women can't lead us out the mess. She ain't strong enough to carry that weight. Because God gave you that big muscles to carry the weight. But if you ain't there, then she struggles. And she drags those poor children along the best she can. So men, it's time for you to stand up and say, God, please restore me. And God said he's going to say this. Turn. Repent. You can't drink as much. You can't smoke as much. You got to do something different. If you want something different to happen in your life, you got to do something different. Because if you keep doing the same things, you won't get the same results. So ask God to come into your heart. Say, God, clean me up, man. I got a lot of bad habits. God, I need you to help me to do better. And then, God, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to read this Bible. And when my friends say, man, that's a white man, God. What you doing, cuz? You're going to be like, I'm going to church. Uh, uh, what? You don't need to do that? Say, no, don't worry about me. You'll be borrowing money in a couple months. Just watch me blow up. And watch God make you a lender and not a borrower. Watch God make you a homeowner and not a renter. Watch God make you the head and not the tail. But it starts with following him. And you're looking at a guy who was called a failure because he hated himself until he found out that God looked just like me and that was made in his very image. And when I found that out, the devil couldn't lie to me no more because I knew if I turned my life around, God would help me to be who I wanted to be. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Everybody come on up. Come on up. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you all. The first thing. Change is hard. It's one of the hardest things to do. The Bible says, can a black man, I love this, because black people all throughout the Bible, we don't even know. It says, can a black man change the color of his skin? It's Jeremiah 15, 23. And the answer is no. And then it says, neither can a man change his ways. Change is hard. We can't change by ourselves. But if we put God first and say, God, look, man. And see, you can talk to God just like you talk to your friends. I don't know all this you need, Moses and Jacob. You don't need to say all that foolishness. Just talk to God just how you talk to your homie. Just be like, because you can call God whatever you want to call. Say, God, we got to get through this thing. It's funny. I walked in the house and sometimes Bishop hear me talking to God. He'd be like, who are you talking to? Because it sounds like I'm talking to the homie. You can talk to God because once you get a relationship with God, he's your friend. And you can talk to him just like a friend. Say, God, help me, man. I, I, I don't know how to get this thing together. And then once you start reading that book, this book is so important. Read the book. Read the book. Read the book. I don't want that. The, the white man changed the word. The devil's a lie. Read the book. Read the book. They don't want you to read this book. Because they know once you start reading this book, you're going to get free. And you won't be a slave anymore. See, slavery ain't about color nowadays. Slavery is about an institution of finances. They want you stuck to the system. They want you scared of COVID. They want you not to be able to think independently. The reason why I didn't get vaccinated, because I read this book. I said, what the hell is the book? God didn't tell me. God said, don't have no spirit. Well, don't scared of it. I've been healthy. Ain't seen no coughing over here. I'm healthy as a rock. The devil's a lie. You got to believe. Understand that God has a greater plan for you. Stop listening to the devil. 
when you pick that book up, he can't speak to you no more. Or if he does speak, you can say, that ain't right. It's not in this book. And the last thing, young people, the devil's been snatching y'all up like crazy lately. Like crazy. Last night, a couple shot down the street on the freeway. Crazy. Here's your secret weapon. Uh, the problem that this generation has is not your fault altogether. Because most of y'all, y'all parents were either young or wasn't there. Uh, this generation doesn't respect their elders. This generation doesn't respect their elders. This, this generation has no respect. Uh, y'all do videos and y'all throw the middle finger up. Saying F you to the world. Not realizing that mom, dad, your future employer, your future husband or wife is looking at you to giving them the middle finger. See, Satan is so clever. That's cool now. F, F the world, cuz. That's cool now. But you don't realize it's the principle that leads to death. Because it's disrespectful. And it's in the book. If you don't believe, I got the scriptures. You've got to learn how to respect your elders. What? So the old lady across the street, they irritate your last nerve. Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I ain't, I ain't got... No. Because if you go up against her, then the devil can go say, God... You saw how she talked to that elder, and the elder represents you, right? Because Satan knows the Bible, that he can use that principle and send a drive-by shooting your way, or send a car accident in your way, and take you out. Learn how to respect your elders. If you do that, I promise you, you will have a long life, a healthy long life. Respect your elders. And for some of you, that's hard because hip-hop doesn't taught you to turn up and you got it going on. The devil is alive. He wants you dead. Remember, his job is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So start respecting your elders. Speak different to your elders. Learn how to honor your elders. And here's what the gift is. Every time I talk to an old person, guess what they give me? Wisdom. I, I learned, my, the reason why I didn't care about COVID is because I talked to an old man. He told me about apple cider vinegar. He said, man, you drink this, you kill everything. He said, apple cider vinegar heal everything. I promise you, he was 85 years old. When I look at old people, I, I said, he lived twice as long as I lived. He knows something I don't know. Respect your elders. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Anybody have any words? We close this up. All right, everybody grab a hand, grab a hand. We got food in the back, so don't leave. We got food, we got drink. Amen, grab a hand. Right here, dear Heavenly Father, we thank for the word that went forward. Father, we're all sinners, saved by grace. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. Father, we're standing at the altar, Father, to obtain grace and mercy, to help us so you can work through the things that we're struggling with. Father, some of us struggle with low self-image. Father, some of us don't know what to do. We've been lied to, and Father, we're lost now. We don't like ourselves. Father, restore us to the love. Restore our gifts. Restore the images that you've given to our families, Father. Speak that to these young people, Father, so they can go and do what you create them to do. Squeeze the hand next to you. I squeeze life into that hand. I squeeze my spirit into that hand. I squeeze vision and purpose into that hand. So that these young people become the head and not the tail. So that they become victorious and never defeated. So that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. And we ask all that in Jesus' name. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Hug somebody. Hug somebody. Hold on. Yeah.